Hi YouTube, um, I'm going to introduce you to my favourite species of stick insect here. Um, these are jungle nymphs um, and I'm going to go through the whole process of how I breed them with you. Um, so this is uh, how I keep them, they're just due to be cleaned out here so I thought I'd show you that as well. Um, you can see at the moment, this time of year, they're feeding on ivy um, and that's just because we've had some frosts and the frosts killed off pretty much all of the bramble from around this area um, and it was just a bit of a hassle for me to go searching for bramble and I've got ivy in my garden so I thought I'll feed them on ivy for a bit. It is recommended that you don't feed them on ivy um, for the whole time but occasionally it's fine. Um, so yeah you can see here they've they've eaten almost all their leaves and what I like to do is just wait until there's just like a few leaves left and then I'll um, clean them out and put some fresh leaves in. Um, this is a male one here on the side so you can see the males are a lot thinner than the females um, and they've got wings as well but I'll show you that a bit more later. Now what's quite exciting is I've been rearing these since they were tiny little nymphs and um, I started off with six, uh, three males and three females. I just had one male die but the the females are at the stage now where they've been mating, uh, they're adults obviously and look I'm just getting my first eggs. So here's an egg, this is what they look like. Um, it's quite hard because you know when you're looking to start with if you've never bred this species before you look and you see all the sort of the droppings of the stick insects and you go oh is that an egg is that an egg and obviously they're just droppings and then this is another problem with the ivy um, the ivy has got these round um, berries on you can see that all over the plant these round berries and these you know they sometimes fall off into the on you know onto the ground onto the floor litter and you sort of pick them out and you go is that an egg and you get excited about that as well um, but they're not and you get to obviously recognize the eggs once they're laid um, and they're really big eggs you know so I've got to go through this lot and pick out all of the eggs and uh, and see so is that a dropping I think that's a dropping yeah <laughs> there you go there's the difference. I mean, you can tell obviously because the eggs are really oval shape and the droppings aren't. They're a bit more random. But um, the berries, uh, I'll show you one of these berries so you can see. Because obviously the berries are round. So they, they you know, if they fall off, you might be wondering if they're an egg or not. But yeah, you, you do get used to this kind of oval shape of the eggs and then you can pick them out quite easily. Um, so they've been laying into this um, substrate, which is just kind of a bit of soil in the bottom really. Um, so I'll need to go through this and see how many I've got. Um, and then I'll need to kind of incubate them separately to get them to hatch out. And you can see that they're, if I were to leave them as they are now, the eggs look quite dry. Okay, this is the um, ivy that I've cut for them. Uh, you can see nice uh, long bits, nice fresh leaves. And yeah, I just um, cut down a bottle of water like this. Just cut it in half. Um, and I, I just use a knife to cut it. Just a, <laughs> a big knife and just slice around. It's just really quick to do. Just lop it off. And then I put all the branches in and I just get a carrier bag and put it all, wedge it all in around the top and it just stops the stick insects from drowning in it. Um, right, when you remove your stick insects, one quite often will fall off and then pretend to be dead. They do that quite often, it's like a defence mechanism. Um, and what I do is just get some long tweezers like this and I just put it very carefully um, under the thorax like this uh, and then I'm not squeezing at all, it's just very gentle and then I just lift her up and just turn her over like that and then just hang her back on the plant until I'm ready to put her in with the fresh leaves um, and you can see like because they're, they're quite they can be quite defensive you know if you tried to pick it up with your hand while she was on her back they can quite often do this thing with their back legs that she's doing now you can see when she's a bit defensive 
um, they have like spikes on their back legs uh, and if they uh, grab your hand you can see the spikes here that if they grab your hand it can hurt quite a bit um, and sometimes they can grip on as well and not let go and then it's quite hard to get them off so um, it's fine like once they're on your hand they're okay and I'll show you later okay um, so I'm going to have to go through all of this substrate to pick out uh, any eggs so I'll do a bit of that here and show you um, some this is this is how I look for them you have to be quite careful obviously because you don't want to kind of squash any eggs or anything um, so I just have a little look on the top layer first and quite often the females will just you know kind of scatter their their eggs they'll just kind of pop them off onto the substrate and uh, and you find quite a few just on the top layer as well um, they will push their abdomens down into the um, substrate and lay their eggs um, deeper down as well um, I don't think it matters particularly as long as you catch the eggs in time so they don't completely dry out and I mean I had a look in here a couple of days ago so um, the eggs and, and this substrate has got a like, little bit of moisture to it as well so um, it doesn't matter too much it's just like if you let the eggs dry out obviously they die so you've got to um, you've got to keep them uh, in sort of humid conditions uh, I'll show you that later, I'll show you how I keep them. Okay, I'll fast forward through this bit. Um, you can see me picking out all the eggs. I, I get quite a few here at this stage and then I stop and I, I carry on looking because actually it's amazing how many um, you, you can find even after you think you've found them all. They seem to just um, get covered in substrate uh, and are quite difficult to see and the more you go through the more you find. Um, and I ended up finding quite a load you'll see later on. Um, but yeah, they're really nice eggs because they're a really nice size. Uh, and this species is is like such a cool species um, that basically the more I can um, hatch out, the better. Because I'd love to rear up loads um, next year. Um, what's really good about this species as well is if you end up with an excess number of babies, um, you can sell them. They normally sell for about sort of ten pounds each which is pretty good for a stick insect nymph really. Right, here's a um, sort of standard cricket tub. Some people will try and hatch out their eggs um, like this. So I'll just show you this um, method. Um, so this is just some uh, kitchen paper. Um, and then what you do is just spray it down so it's nice and moist. Um, you don't want it like sopping wet, but you want it to, to be um, damp. Uh, and then you, you can feel it just to check that it's damp and not, yes, not like totally saturated. Um, and then I just put the eggs in here. So I'm just doing this temporarily this time just um, to stop the eggs from drying out. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll actually incubate them in a different way, which I'll show you a bit later on. Um, so, yeah, you can see how many eggs I ended up getting here quite a few this time around and bear in mind the females really have only just started laying so what happens with the females is um, they they do their kind of final molt and then you get excited because you think oh they'll they'll start laying eggs like straight away now and you see them mating with the males fairly quickly um, but then actually you do have to wait for quite a few weeks before they start laying um, and mine have just started laying uh, and I've already got this number of eggs out uh, and the females are still really big and fat so I should end up with a really really good number of eggs uh, and I probably will have to sell some nymphs if I manage to hatch them all out I'm not going to be able to rear all of them but that's what I love about you know breeding animals and things like you know by starting off um, I just had six nymphs like I said um, one male died so I did pretty well to get you know three females um, to adulthood uh, and then because they do have problems sometimes when they're molting and that sort of thing you can sometimes lose animals when they're doing their molt but um, but yeah just by having three females uh, I'm going to end up with loads of eggs and then I can end up with loads of uh, nymphs hopefully um, right you can see the holes in the side of this um, cricket tub so if you did want to hatch out your eggs like this I recommend covering up pretty much all of the holes with um, some sellotape 
because you want it to stay humid in there um, and you will probably have to spray the kitchen paper every so often just to make sure it stays um, moist right this is some coconut fibre this is what I'm going to use later on um, to put my eggs in I'm going to make a layer of substrate and um, yeah I'll show you how I do it in a bit um, but this is the stuff to get I recommend right so this is all the fresh um, ivy in the tub ready to go and then here's my uh, stick insects so when you're moving stick insects uh, from one place to another as long as you're gentle um, you can get them just by the thorax and again I'm not putting much pressure on here at all okay you don't want to that'd be the worst thing wouldn't it you don't want to squash them or anything um, and then you can just um, grab them like this and you can see like once they're in that position they sort of go still they kind of give up and then you can um, you can pop them in and then they realize what you're doing and they climb onto their plant and sometimes they start eating straight away if you're lucky um, if you're trying to get one like this and they grip on like so hard that you can't you know you can't remove it easily like I did with the last one um, then if they're hanging on a branch like this you can just snip the branch, whole branch off and then um, just move it across and then they usually because I think they can sense that it's fresh food um, they normally can be kind of um, teased onto it quite easily just give them a little nudge and they tend to walk straight onto it okay so the females I'm always a, a little bit more careful with the females obviously because they're um yeah they're they're the ones with the eggs so I've got to be really gentle um right I'm just going to show you uh see this kind of bulge here this is like their abdomen and what quite often happens is um, it opens up and you can quite often see an egg just kind of hanging in there waiting to pop out um, the, because the eggs are so big yeah I think it takes them quite an effort to lay them but yeah look how fat she is here like her abdomen is absolutely massive and full of eggs um, so I should get a really good number I'm actually quite interested to see exactly how many I end up with um, but as long as I keep giving them fresh ivy they'll keep laying eggs until they die um, which probably won't be all that much longer I guess um, they tend not to live too long as adults just literally long enough to lay all their eggs um, what's quite interesting here is I saw this female eating some berries some ivy berries I didn't realize they ate the berries but I guess when they start running out of leaves maybe they turn and they eat the berries and yeah, because after I noticed the first one eating berries, I looked down at this one, and she's also eating berries. So it uh, it can't be a coincidence. It must be something that they do. Um, and I quite like the ivy, you know, as a food plant. I know like it's you're not supposed to give it to them for the whole time, but the ivy obviously is not covered in spikes like the brambles are. So it actually makes cleaning them out quite a pleasant experience. Okay, um, so once I transferred the females over, um, you can see this one started munching straight away. Quite often they do that. Um, sometimes I spray them when I first put them in, uh, and that kind of stimulates them to start feeding straight away and have a good old munch. But you can see they, they get through quite a lot of leaves, this species, because they are so massive. Yeah, these are the um, the heaviest insects in the world. Um, they're a really nice, huge size. And you can see why they're my favourite species, because they are so big and impressive. But also, just the females are so vivid green, so bright. Um, and they just look like, kind of, their heads and things, they just look like aliens in a way. <laughs> a really cool species. And yeah, just that the males are so different, you know, with their their wings and things and they're just yeah completely different colour but I love them and you'll see the males hanging it's a shame I didn't get any on this video but you see the males hanging on the backs of the females and the females carry them around right so this is what I was saying about the females um, 
being absolutely fine. Once you get them to crawl onto you, they're really nice actually. Um, it's only when they're defensive, so like if you try to grab them, then they get defensive and they, they do that thing with their back legs where they're trying to kind of grab hold of you and, <laughs> and it does hurt. But if you can nudge them up onto your hand or your arm, once they're on you, they're absolutely fine and then they're, they're lovely. And I mean, just look at the size of it, you know, compared to my arm, it's absolutely massive. Gorgeous, yeah, really gorgeous species. I can't recommend them enough. If you want to keep stick insects, um, you know, if you're going to go to the effort of like removing food plants and you know feeding them, going and collecting food plants, why not, you know, keep a really impressive species like this? I mean, Indian stick insects are fine, but <laughs> I just find them a little bit boring. <laughs> So yeah, go for something like this. Um, other species I recommend are, um, you know, uh, giant prickly stick insects uh, from Australia. Um, also, you got uh, giant spiny stick insects are really good. They are not for beginners though, because they've the males of that species have got absolutely massive spines on their back legs, and um, if they grab hold of you, yeah, that that is uh, cause for concern. <laughs> But I, I think I just prefer all of the big, heavy stick insect species. They're my favourites. I mean, I have kept some quite unusual stick insects as well last season, like Mount Apo stick insects, and um, they're nice because they're kind of waxy. Uh, and there's a mossy stick insect as well, which is um, really camouflaged as moss, and that, that's quite an interesting species. Um, there's green bean stick insect, which I quite want to keep as well. They're quite unusual. Okay, so this is me misting them. You can see one of the females there getting a bit defensive. Um, but usually what happens, you spray and then they recognise the moisture and they just start having a good munch. Um, I'll also spray the substrate. Uh, I give this a really kind of thorough spray make it pretty damp because then that adds humidity to the whole kind of cage once you put the lid on um, it also means then when the females lay eggs if the eggs are just sitting on the surface for a while um, they're not going to dry out but now I know they're laying eggs I'll be um, checking the substrate every two or three days and just picking out as many eggs as I can find each time you can see her here look having a little drink so quite often they will just, you know, kind of suck up the water from the surface before they start munching. This one's still having a good old mosh. Yeah, the nymphs of this species are, um, you know, very different between the males and the females, uh, which is really nice as well. Um, I was just going to mention as well, the scientific name of this, in case you want to sort of look it up, um, is Heteropteryx dilatata. Um, the giant spiny stick insect that I was talking about um, is called Eurocantha calcarata. Um, that is the one that's the dangerous one that I was mentioning. Um, the giant prickly stick insect from Australia, lots of people keep that, and it's a very popular species. Um, that's called... Uh, Extatosoma tyratum. Um, yeah, I definitely recommend those as well. Uh, and those come in a really nice form that looks like lichen as well. If you're if you're lucky, the only problem with that is that you have to actually keep them with lichen in their cage the whole time. Otherwise, um, when they molt, they quite often lose the really nice lichen pattern. Um, but yeah, have a look uh, and see. Oh, there's also a giant uh, leaf insect, which is another one that I keep that I really like. Um, and that's called um, Phylium giganteum. Um, and that's huge. That's like from Malaysia. Uh, and yeah, really, really good camouflage. Really looks like a leaf. Um, so have, have a look at those. Check them out. Um, I have done another video on those actually, so you could, you could have a look and see. Um, Right, so in a second I'm going to show you a male. I'll get a male out uh, and put him on my arm just so you can have a look. Because obviously the females, they've got, uh, you know, their sort of wing cases. 
which look very kind of leafy. They've got veins and stuff on them. Um, it's good camouflage, helps their camouflage. Uh, I guess in the wild their food plants are a lot brighter green, so they probably camouflage much better with them. Okay, here's the male, and you can see um, they have long, fully developed wings. So these guys would be able to fly. Um, I don't think I've had this species flying around the room before. Um, I have with the um, Australian giant spi uh, sp prickly stick insect, sorry. Uh, I've had those flying around quite often, and that, that's quite good fun. I mean, it, it can freak people out if they come round and you've got one flying around the room, but, um, but I just think that's fun. <laughs> um, yeah, look at the wings. You can see they go right down to the end of the abdomen. Um, and these guys have got really massive antennae as well, which is good. Yeah, really kind of alien looking things. Right, I'm going to um, pop this one back on this plant and then um, I'll show you the wings. I mean, I'm not going to open the wings out fully or anything because I don't want to hurt him, but um, I can just show you like how, uh, how separate they are from the abdomen. There you go. You, I mean, you can see even before I'm sort of touching them. See that how they sort of spread out, and then the abdomen's just underneath there. Yeah. So um, I've actually got like some pinned specimens of um, different stick insects and things. And actually, when these guys have got their um, wings fully open, they look really quite amazing. Okay, I'll show you my preferred method of getting the eggs to hatch. So what I do is deep layer of um, eco earth and it needs to be slightly damp. You can see the block here, um, you just put it in water and, and uh, it goes damp and you can break it all up into the substrate. So deep layer of that um, and then you just um, put your eggs on the top of that layer. Um, and then what I like to do is kind of separate the eggs slightly from each other um, you could I mean you could put them all I probably will end up actually having because I'm going to end up with loads of eggs they probably will all be touching each other um, but just in case you get an egg that dies and goes mouldy if you've got fewer eggs and you want to um, make sure as many of them hatch as possible separate them all out like this so they're not touching each other then if one goes mouldy it won't affect the one that's next to it um, and then what I do is just get another layer of um, eco earth and put it over the top um, and yeah you don't want your eco earth to be fully saturated but you do want it to have to have a certain amount of moisture in it it needs to be slightly damp so yeah this is a much thinner layer because they still want um, air to get to them um, so I, I just do you know sort of an inch or less usually uh, and then I'll just give this a good spray, uh, and this is in a yeah, just in an ice cream tub. Um, and what I'll do is um, I'll put the lid on, and the lid is just I've just made nine holes in it. That's all, and they're quite small holes um, because you want the moisture to stay in there. Okay, and then I'll put like a date label on this tub so I know when they were laid, and then when it's about two or three weeks before they're due to hatch I'll take this lid off and I'll put like a big clear tub over the top that way when they do hatch I can see them and I can start feeding them straight away because otherwise if they don't get food they'll die so you really need to do that uh, and I think this species takes quite a long time for the eggs to hatch I think it's sort of between six and nine months so you do have to wait for quite a long time and you have to keep the eggs moist that whole time it's really important Okay, here's a whole bunch of them that I kept in the past. You can see them all on my arm. Um, and yeah, they're, they're just a really lovely species. And um, I do recommend, if you're thinking about getting any stick insects, um, get these. Uh, also, you can hang them on your face, which is really good fun. Uh, especially if you want to answer the door to the postman or something like that. Um, they always get a good uh, shock if you show them. Um, this is all very well, actually, until one of them... Um, decides to put its foot up your nose um, which is what happened to me on this occasion I had lots of them on my face and it was all going very well but um, obviously their feet have got like little hooks on the end 
uh, and it doesn't hurt normally if they just attach to your face or something but as soon as one decides that it's going to put its foot actually up your nose um, like I think in this next shot yeah right up my nostril uh, and then it can be a bit painful and then uh, <laughs> you get in a bit of a panic and you've got to try and take them all off your face and it's not as easy as you think anyway um thanks for watching and um if you want to see any other videos like this check out other ones that i've put on youtube because there are quite a few animal ones um and please hit subscribe and then anything that i put up in the future you'll get to see as soon as i post it thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next video